Let's start off with what's this organ? So liver. So whenever we talk about the lobes for the liver, it's always in reference to done. Okay. So central organ is the liver. In order to tell which one is which for the lobes, always reference it to the organism itself. Not your right, not it's not your left. It's always on the organism. So this has to be the which lobe? Right? That's the right. So this is the right side of the frog, right? So this is right lobe. This is the left anterior. Left anterior lobe. Next one is the left posterior lobe. So how many lobes of the liver in the frog? Three. Only three. In us it's different. Okay. Inferior to the liver is the Gallbladder. This is a gallbladder. Immediately below the liver is the gallbladder. Okay? Gallbladder is important for what? Storing bile. Storing bile. Who produces bile? Liver. So liver produces bile. Gallbladder stores bile. All right. Thank you. What are these finger like projections? So those are called fat bodies, right? Only in frog. We're only talking about frog. They're responsible for what? Storage of fat. Okay. The greater momentum. Um, it sure it serves the same purpose, except greater momentum. Anytime you hear the word momentum, it's going to be hanging from the stomach. In this, in this case, it's hanging from the body wall. That's different from if they're on abdomen and I take you to the cadaver and they still have their greater momentum, then I'll I'll show it to you. All right. And greater momentum serves. A different purpose in humans and cats and those type of organisms. These are just strictly fat bodies. All right. All right. So let's start with digestive system. Okay. So. Where's my little... Oh, there it is. Oh, thank you. Um, starting higher up, what empties into the stomach? The esophagus. So it goes esophagus. This is the stomach. Once I go from stomach, I get to the... Who has a glove on? Can you just uh, hold... Can you just hold that back like that? Gently, very gently. Okay. Okay. So stomach goes into the duodenum. So this far, first part is the duodenum. As I move further, now when I'm getting more coiled here, I'm into the ileum. So duodenum and ileum are a part of the small intestine. All right. In us, we have duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Frogs don't have a jejunum because they don't need that much absorption like we do. They are swallowing their organisms whole. So they don't process food the way we do, right? So we have ileum. That's what I'm on right now, ileum. So it went stomach, duodenum, ileum, okay? Ileum. All right, so you see this, this clear film? Membrane? What's that called? That's called mesentery. Mesentery is important because it will secure the organs to the body wall, and it also transmits, do you see these little blood vessels in here? It will also transmit blood vessels to the organ for nutrients, all right? So it's always important that these organs get nutrients. If these organs don't have nutrients, you get something called dead bowel syndrome. You're not able to pass your feces, all right? Okay, so ileum will end, so ileum ends right there, in frog, in a straight, large intestine, all right? So the digestive system in frogs is very simple, all right? Ileum goes into a straight, large intestine, which goes into what? The anus, anus right? To the anus, which then goes through the cloaca. So, in amphibians, just like we saw in lamprey, what goes through cloaca? Urine. 
feces and the gametes. All right? In humans, different situation. All right? That's divided. All right. So we're done with digestive now. Okay. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to look at accessory organs, which is pancreas and spleen. All right? In order to locate your spleen, just move the liver back a little bit. What was this? That was the stomach. You look for the inner curve. So we have an outer curve of the stomach, and we have an inner curve of the stomach. The inner curve of the stomach is closer to the inside. All right? So the inner curve, you look for the inner curve of the stomach, and you'll see, right, there is the pancreas. It's very small. Look for the inner curve of the stomach. If you can't see, just come over. Okay, do you see this? Inner curve, I just, what did I just take off? I just disconnected mesentery. So I look for the inner curve of the stomach. What's this? This is the, all of this, see that? All of this is pancreas, okay? Pancreas is important for, it functions in, Insul it, it produces insulin through certain cell types called beta cells, all right? It also, it also aids in the process of protein digestion, okay? And breaking down starches. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Pancreatic amylase, yes. Okay, so the pancreas... Yes. So the pancreas has what's called alpha, beta, and delta cells. The alpha cells produce glucagon, beta cells produce insulin, and the delta cells produce something called somatostatin, which is always going to be a suppressor to insulin. All right, so let me ask you this question. What is the function of insulin? If my blood sugar is high, does it increase it or decrease it? It decreases. So what happens to a type 1 diabetic? In a type 1 diabetic, the beta cells destroyed. They're not producing insulin. All right. So if I'm having an increase in blood glucose, I can't naturally bring it down because I can't produce insulin. All right. So that's what's responsible for the injections. That's type one. Type one just means that the beta cells aren't producing insulin. Type two is different. It's more diet based. All right. That's the diabetes mellitus. All right. That's the sidebar. So Pancreas produces insulin. Insulin does what? Brings the blood sugar, blood, 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 blood sugar down. All right, so that's pancreas. Next thing that we're going to look for is the, you look for small intestine, right in the mesentery of the small intestine. Let me take this fat body out. This little reddish brown bean, that is the spleen. Okay, that's the spleen. Sorry. So here's the spleen. This is the spleen, all right? The spleen, what's the spleen important for? So it phagocytizes damaged red blood cells, all right? And it also can be a recycling factory as well. So the spleen is usually categorized as what's called a lymphatic organ. All right. So spleen, in us, you never want an enlarged spleen because that's indicative of disease, of infection. All right. So spleen, major thing is that it phagocytizes red blood cells, or you could say phagocytizes damaged red blood cells. All right. Also a, what does it also do? Recycles. It also recycles, not blood, but the red blood cells. Okay. Be careful, because remember, we have different cells in, in blood. All right. So how do we find spleen? So the spleen is going to be located in what mesentery? The mesentery of the small intestine. Where do we find pancreas? We found it via the inner curve of the stomach. So there's pancreas. All right. Next.